Hey everybody! In this month's gel press video, I am making some adorable punny animal valentines. This is actually one part of a two-part video where I show you here how to make the valentines, but then I'm going to come back and show you how I made the prints that the little hearts are made of. So to make these valentines, you just need some heart dies, a little bit of twine, a way to punch some holes, some white cardstock, some double-sided adhesive, and of course I'm using a gel print, except I'm not. I'm actually using the Brayer cleaning sheets, which are beautiful, from this session that will make up the second part of this video. These Brayer cleaning sheets came out so perfect for Valentine's Day with golden open paints that I just loved them and I knew I had to turn them into a project. So this is a very simple process. I just die cut five of these hearts with the same heart die. I use the same heart die to cut the cardstock and I use the same heart die to cut the double-sided adhesive. And all of this is listed below in the description. So to make these little heart sandwiches, first you just take the first liner off of the double-sided adhesive. It'll be real obvious which side has adhesive on it and which side doesn't. And then you just carefully place your little heart down. I found that it was easier to line it up with the point and then the little V at the top so that you didn't have any white sticking out. But if you do, you'll see in a couple of mine, I do, and it looks fine. You can cut it off right there. If you don't like it, you can just trim it off. You can also use a Copic marker to color the edge. But after you've applied the adhesive, you really wanna burnish it very well with your bone folder or a credit card or something like that to transfer the adhesive from the second part of that sheet onto the back of your gel press print. So I've done that and you're also going to be able to see when you pull it off how perfectly it's transferred and then we'll stick it down to these white cardstock hearts and that's just to make it sturdy because I will be attaching something to the front of these and I need them to be a little bit sturdier than the copy paper that I printed on. So you do the same thing, you remove the second liner from the back of the heart to expose the adhesive. And this adhesive that I'm using, it transfers little tiny dots of adhesive all over the heart. And you can tell if you've done a good job burnishing it because the entire surface will be covered with these little tiny dots, as you can see here. So that one turned out perfectly. And it's very easy to transfer this adhesive, just, but you do need to do the quick burnishing step. Same thing, take your sticky heart and put it down onto the white cardstock. Just line it up as well as you can. And now you have a very sturdy little heart. So I burnish again to really make sure that that adhesive is holding those two things together and that there isn't any space in between them from maybe I had laid it down without completely pressing it. So make sure and do that second burnishing step. Now I will trim off this little white piece, but you'll see on a few others, I didn't trim them down. I just left it. It almost looked like a sort of a little drop shadow. And I chose white for the back because I wanted someone to be able to write something back here when the whole thing was finished. But you could always put another print on this side or some pattern paper or whatever you like. So that one is done. This is what they'll all look like. So I will speed up the process of doing the other five because it's just repetitive peeling them off and trying not to get my head in the way <laughs> when I'm showing you how to line up the hearts. And you can see I tend to do it a little bit to the left every time and there's a little bit um, hanging off that right hand side, but this is so easy. 
You could also take an entire sheet of the double-sided adhesive and you could put your brayer cleaning sheet or your gel press sheet on it before you die cut. But I hadn't decided exactly what I was going to do. And so I just found it easier to just die cut the hearts separately. So, but you could save yourself a step for sure. And then you wouldn't have to worry about getting these aligned. So it's completely up to you. This adhesive does come in large sheets. So you can definitely put a whole piece of paper onto one of these sheets and then die cut it. And it won't transfer any adhesive to your dies. Now look at this little guy. This is a very specific kind of animal and it matters for the greeting that I'm going to use. So I was kind of cracking myself up with these. May our love never taper off to go with a little taper. And I got these sentiments. I printed these myself, but there was a very funny contest that a Melbourne, Australia zoo had on Twitter. And they challenged other zoos to come up with punny animal themed Valentine's greetings. This was in early 2020, in February 2020. And so I just read the whole list that every zoo had put out of the different animals. And I found the ones that matched the little bag of animals that I had. And then I printed the greetings on my printer just with a black background and white text. So each one is custom chosen to match my little animal. Now I'm using one of my very old tools here. This is a manual punch that you smack with a hammer. And those of you who've been crafting since the late 1900s will recognize it as a device that you would use when you were setting eyelets in your cards. So I still have it. I hung on to it and I'm glad I did because my punch doesn't reach far enough into each of these little hearts to tie the twine around each one of the animals. So I love having this little manual punch around, even if it is a little bit loud. So now this second one, I feel like it needs to go higher up. It doesn't go as well across the bottom of the heart to where I could cut off the sides because it's a little bit longer sentiment. So I will put this at the top for my little rhino and I'll do the same thing, just manually punch a little hole for this little guy. And then I can use my 1 8 inch punch. If anyone knows of a very long reach punch that can get into the middle of projects like this, that's an eighth of an inch circle, I sure would love to know about it because I haven't been able to find one and my crocodile doesn't reach quite far enough either. So I'd love to have one. It would be very useful. I use this 1 8 inch punch quite a bit, but I always run into that short issue. The next one is a little bird. The sentiment is hilarious. So this one will fit across the bottom. And then I can just trim off the sides of that. So I don't know if he's a crane. I don't know what kind of bird he is. We're talking about a plastic animal here, so there's no need to be super duper scientific. <laughs> and since my sentiment was just a general bird sentiment, this worked really well. And what you want to look for, I'll link you to the dies that I use, but what you're going to want for this project is a die that's big enough. So you'll need to buy the animals. I put my bag that I bought below, but You'll want to buy the animals before you pick the heart because you're probably going to find that some of them are too large to match any of your dies. I got lucky. The very first bag that I bought was the correct size for this die that I had. And this is my largest heart die set. So that worked out great. But check with that sizing before you get started on this. So the other thing that happens with a shorter punch like this is if you put it too far in towards the edge of the paper, it can leave little marks at the edge. And that's what happened at the top of this little heffalump valentine. So that's what I was doing, smoothing that out with my bone folder, trying to get rid of that little crease that it leaves. This one is so cute. Everybody loves an elephant. And this one says, I love you a ton. And that one will fit across the bottom as well. So I will just stick that on there. 
My attempt to get things straight doesn't always work, but these are easy enough to trim off and it looks cute no matter what. So the very last one is probably my favorite. I like you very much and it has an adorable little bear. I looked through every animal in this set and what I wanted to do was pick just my favorites, the cutest ones, but I needed to pick ones that I could have a punny saying for and some of the animals I didn't really find anything for. So I'm glad that the bear one worked out because I had picked him out as one of my favorites. Now this giant thing of twine, this is one of my favorite purchases ever. It's 2,300 feet of twine and I got it for $4 <laughs> on Amazon in 2012. They still sell it on Amazon, but it's now $12. And I've been using it for nine years now, and there's no way I'm ever going to use it all up. We use it for everything. We use it out in the garden to tie plants up. But 2,300 feet of twine is a lot of twine. So there's my <laughs> little bear. He's so cute. I love these little figurines. There's the elephant. There's the little bird. The rhino. I'm not sure why the rhino's green. Maybe he's like the shiny version in Pokemon Go. And then the taper. So here's the group of them all together. Head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.